Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to our virtual event for BA Fine Art Photography. I'm just going to give it just a couple of moments just to get everyone in from the waiting room and then we will begin with some introductions and to tell you how the session is going to work today. Okay, so I think that's everyone in from the waiting room. Um, so just to start with some introductions, my name's Hannah, I'm the Student Recruitment and Marketing Manager at Camberwell College of Arts, and today I'm joined by Maya. Maya, do you want to introduce yourself? Hello, I'm Maya Conran, I'm the Course Leader for BA Fine Art Photography at Camberwell College of Arts. And between us, the aim of today is to give you an introduction to Camberwell as a college, what it's like to study with us, and obviously an introduction to the Fine Art Photography course at Camberwell. Now, the way that the session is going to run today is all of your microphones are automatically muted during presentations and the same for your webcams. Those are not visible to either us or anyone else in the audience. And um, there will be an opportunity to ask any questions that you may have. Um, but what we'll do is we'll take those questions at the very end of the event after all the presentations have finished. Do feel free though to start typing your questions into the questions box. So you should be able to see a little Q&A icon on your screen. If you click into there, that will take you to the questions box. You can type those in and then we'll pick those up at the end. Now, after the event today, you'll be receiving a follow up email and that will include a recording of the event. So you have that for reference, but also any of the resources that we mentioned today, things about portfolios, etc., support services. And those will be included in that follow up email. So you'll have everything in one place uh, for you to call upon when you need it. OK, so I'm going to get started with an introduction to Camberwell as a college. OK, so let's talk a little bit about Camberwell College of Arts itself. So Camberwell is part of the University of the Arts London, UAL. Now, UAL is quite a unique structure for a university. We're made up of six separate colleges and each of those colleges has a different specialism or different approach to their subject. Now, across those six colleges, we have around about 20,000 students. So that's a huge creative network for you to come and join. Once you're a student of one of our colleges, you also gain access to all six college libraries. But also there are things like exhibitions, talks, public events that you can attend across the six colleges. But everything you will need on the day to day, you will find at your home college, which would be Camberwell. Now, once again this year, we've been ranked second in the world for art and design in the QS World Subject Rankings. But Camberwell itself is a really unique place to study. So Camberwell has a really long and rich history as an art school. And we celebrated being 125 years old recently. So it was purpose built to be an art school. And when you come and study with us or if you get to visit us before that, you will see that reflected in the architecture of the building. Uh, the original building is the kind of Victorian era. We've then got a brutalist frontage. And in the last few years, we've also added a new academic building, which provides new uh, studio spaces, resources, and also a new halls of residence as well. So it's also very much built for the future. Our ethos at Camberwell is about rethinking current practices and cultivating new. And we really try to embrace both traditional craftsmanship, but also new digital technology. Uh, both in our facilities and in our teaching. What we really want to encourage students to do whilst they're with us is to find your own path. So we want to give you the freedom to explore your individuality through your practice whilst you study with us. In terms of location, so Camberwell is based in South East London and we're right at the heart of a creative community. Uh, we are surrounded by galleries, project spaces, studios, pop-up events. There's a real thriving local art scene, which the college is part of. There's also lots to do socially as well. Plenty of places to eat, drink, socialise. Um, we're right in the middle kind of between Camberwell Green and Peckham. Both are full of independent businesses, so you'll find lots to do in the local area. We're also very lucky at Camberwell because we do have four halls of residence all within easy walking distance. So you can see here pictured a garden's house. Garden's house is the closest halls to the college. It's literally just a stone's throw across the courtyard. Um, but we also have the three other halls of residence, two of which are about five minutes walk away and the other one is about a 10 to 15 minute walk away. So we've got a real kind of campus feel uh, to the college. 
We're also very lucky with our transport links to central London. So although we're based in South East London, you can easily get to central London to enjoy the amenities in the city as well. Now, in terms of facilities at the college, so let's start off with the library services. Now, I mentioned earlier that once you're a student of one of our UAL colleges, you can access all six college libraries. Now, the college libraries are stocked to the different specialisms, and we also have dedicated subject librarians as well who can help you with research, signposting you to different resources that you might want to draw upon. We also have lots of archives and special collections that students can access across the university and also a number of online resources as well. There's things like LinkedIn Learning, um, a great uh, facility for students. It means that if you want to do any extracurricular learning, maybe there's a particular skill or a software or something that you want to brush up on, you can access LinkedIn Learning. We also have learning zones. Now, the learning zones are based at Central St. Martins, London College of Communication, and we also have one at Camberwell. Now, these are very much kind of informal, flexible learning spaces, and they are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So if you are maybe doing a collaborative project and you need a space to meet, these are great places to do that. Or maybe you're up against a deadline and you're working a bit later, you can come and use these learning zones. The learning zones include kind of uh, meeting spaces. They also have IT facilities and they also have a small practical making space as well that students can use. All of our colleges also have a central loan store. So this is where you would go to hire any equipment that you may need to support your learning. So things if you need to borrow um, maybe a laptop, a projector, camera, lighting, sound recording kit, any kind of audio visual kit that you might need you can borrow from the central loan store. All loans are completely free of charge. And also you've got a specialist technician. So if you're not quite sure what you need to realize a particular brief project or idea, you can always talk to them. Now, alongside those uh, other facilities, we also have our technical workshops. So we have a range of professional workshops at Camberwell, but also each course is supported by individual specialist technicians who work specifically for the course and work alongside students on that course. So we have the Printmaking Centre, which uh, provides both traditional and digital facilities. So supporting students in making using digital screen, mono, relief printing. Uh, we also have plate and stone lithography. We've got a fantastic letterpress, which was part of the original art school. Um, and we also provide facilities for aquatint and etching as well. We have the photography centre, so a range of dark rooms and specialist equipment. So we have our photographic studio, we have a multi-format fibre dark room, 35mm black and white resin dark room and specialist print dark room. And also our photography students have access to a digital dark room as well. In terms of 3D making, so the 3D workshops are spread across the college and each specialises in uh, different processes or materials. So students in 3D can work with metal. We also have a ceramics workshop, a plastic workshop, a wood workshop, and also foundry for metal casting. So depending on your interest and practice, you may use one or all of these facilities. Now, across all of these workshops, you will have to do an induction. Um, so that will be available for you to book onto. And once you're inducted, you can then talk to the technicians about accessing the workshops. Now, student support services at the college and university. So student services at UAL, we have services including student advice service, academic support, counselling, health advice, chaplaincy, and also a disability service. Now, all of those services are provided completely free of charge and confidentially for all of our students. And some of those student, student services you can also tap into before you actually join us. So maybe you are thinking about how you might finance your studies um, you can speak to one of our financial advisors who can give you some guidance around uh, student loans, finance, different uh, possibilities with bursaries and grants. Or maybe you're an international student and you will need a visa to study with us. We also have immigration specialists who you can talk to who will support you with that process. Now, these services are available in the college, so at Camberwell, but we also have a central hub in High Holborn. Uh, which is in central London. So some students prefer to attend these services away from their home college. The services are accessed uh, in different ways. So some have bookable one-to-one -one appointments, some do drop-ins each week, 
uh, some run workshops and sessions that you can attend without booking. Um, but this is all available on your student account for you to see. Now, our careers and employability team. So they work across the university. We have representatives for each college and they support our students and graduates uh, with different employability and professional skills. So they offer job opportunities. So things like arts temps, which is our in-house temping agency. So you can get paid work alongside your study. They also offer mentoring opportunities, uh, funding. So maybe you've got a creative project or an entrepreneurial idea that you would like support with. You can apply to the funding pots. Uh, we also have lots of opportunities for you to showcase and exhibit work, uh, including something called Not Just a Shop, which is a actual physical retail unit in High Holborn, but also an online shop where students can get their work stocked and sold. And all of this support is free and accessible to our students and graduates. And they have fantastic online resources and also lots of different workshops and sessions which students can attend as well. So if you do join us, I'd really encourage you to look into those. And then we have our Arts SU, so the Arts Students Union. We've got a really active students union at UAL, uh, representatives at each college. And the students union cover a number of different areas. So they have an independent help and advice service for students. They run something called Maiden Arts London, which is all about showcasing and exhibition opportunities for students. And then obviously we have lots of sports clubs and societies as well for our students to join. And when you first come to us, uh, we do something called the Big Welcome, which is in the first week. It helps you to get orientated to your college, but also you can meet people from the different societies, sports clubs, have a look at what you might want to get involved in socially whilst you're studying with us. OK, so after today, there's still lots of ways in which you can find out more about studying with us. Um, first of all, to point out our portfolio advice web page, lots of fantastic resources on there. We've got a whole series on YouTube about digital portfolios, what a portfolio is, what we're looking for. So please do have a look at that. You can have a look at the course web page uh, that has lots of information. We're also running monthly campus tours. So after today, if you do want to come and visit us in college, have a look around, then please do book on to one of those. We're also running a number of UAL discovery webinars. Now these cover lots of different subject areas, things like um, application, portfolio, personal statement, UAL accommodation services, um, and also an overview to the university. So if you're interested in joining any of those, I'll pop the uh, events page link into that follow-up email and then obviously to remind you that applications come through ucas.com and the deadline if you're looking to join us next year is the 31st of Jan January 2024 so you'll need to get your applications in by then okay so that is enough from me um what now I've now got a student presentation unfortunately Beatrice who's one of our third year students she couldn't join us live today but she has very kindly recorded a presentation talking about her experience on the course and also to tell you a little bit about her practice and what she's been developing on the course. So I will share that with you now. Photography at Camberwell and I'm here today to be talking a little bit about my experience as a fine arts student at UAL. Uh, I would like to start by saying that I'm actually probably biased because I have done my my foundation at Camberwell as well. So here in this portfolio, what I'm going to be showing you is sort of my my pathway as an artist from my foundation till now. I'm going to try to be as quick as I can. And please, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to email me or find any other point of contact with Maya or Hannah. So I started at Camberwell actually on my foundation. I also did a time-based media foundation. And at the time I was very interested in how photography tells stories mainly. A lot of people say a photo is worth more than a thousand words. And as though it is cliche, it is kind of true. As, as artists, I think we should be very aware of the power that we have in telling stories and proving them right in certain ways as well. And what really fascinated me was especially photos that didn't have a artistic 
side to it necessarily, more historical way. And this is where I started to be very interested in anthropological studies, actually. My first project was based on the work of an anthropologist in Brazil, where I am from. And my whole point in this project was trying to create a new storyline to the events that were taking place. For a bit more of context, this work is mainly about my family tree, focusing on my grandmother. And because my grandmother is originally from an indigenous tribe in the north of Brazil, but she wasn't raised there, there was always a lot of questions in my head to what have could have been her life like if she wasn't taken away from that place. At the same time, though, when my grandmother was taken from that place, an anthropologist was in the community where she belonged. So I kind of tried to map the two of these things and create a new story based on it. Here you're going to see in this presentation uh, on the left side, Part of the text that I took as an inspiration, uh, the libraries were very, very useful in this moment because I didn't have necessarily an academic background to be endorsing everything that I was saying. And the minute that I started to explain what I was looking for, what I wanted and what my goal was with that material, I had amazing support from the librarians and other academic support to get my project going, which later on in this presentation, you see how this is still part of what I do. So I like to use archival images in my projects. Most of the photos that I take are not actually mine per se. So I don't even say, I don't even know if saying that I take them is the correct term here. So I use the archival images in this book and transform them again. If you can see from this presentation, I hope you can see um, the image has been altered manually. I printed this image and did a double layer in order to extract someone from this image in a way to represent being taken from that place and being taken from your environment and only slightly when you start to notice the patterns when you come very close to see the situation as a way you are actually able to see the consequences of that action i mixed it as well with family photos on the left side this is like a photo from my grandmother when she was a child i would say probably in teenage years along with photos from herself when she was older in these i actually wanted people to realize that someone had been taken from the image as a displaced kind of element without even being part of it and on the right side again an image from one of the books that I used. And this one is more meticulous. You actually do have to come very close. My whole intention was that it's almost unperceptive that the image has been altered. It is almost unperceptive that there is someone missing. But the moment that you realize, the moment you come closer, you're like, hold up a second, who is missing in this picture? And this was around this was my first and final project for my foundation um where i dedicated most of the year for that project because i ended up mixing other elements as well but this definitely will come back in another time in this presentation um and whilst talking about the foundation i think it's very important to talk about my BA, obviously, um, I started it around sometime in 2020, 2021, to be very honest, I can't remember, but I'll be finishing now in 2024, June. And so far, this has been kind of my, exper my experimentation with the work. I take photos, but the photos I take are not necessarily the final result of my work. They are part of the investigation. Uh, for the last two years, um, during my holidays, I actually go back to Brazil and I use my time there as well as part of my practice. Um, 
this photo was taken in an indigenous reservation just by the entrance i was trying to work with the communities there talking about their relationship with clay and the soil as this community in specific was having huge consequences was seeing huge consequences on their land because of illegal mining and the use of mercury and other heavy minerals and that land for extraction of gold and silver but what i find funny um in this moment is that my camera stopped working and all the information that i had from that moment kind of was lost um but not really, because most of the time I wasn't even taking photos. I was listening to people. I was drawing. I was writing. I was experiencing that moment. And when I got my photos back and I realized that I didn't actually have anything to kind of vouch for me and the experience that I had, I decided to use these anyway, because you can still see parts of the, the ground and those black lines, they are the division in my analog camera between frame and frame. It stopped working for some reason in this particular role, but I really enjoyed it. And I really enjoy how you can't really tell who you're seeing. This is part of a collection. So obviously, once you get the full information, I hope you can see the bigger picture. But it as itself, I also really enjoy um, how with some time, I guess, when you when you go into your course, you probably have an expectation of what is it you want to do. And you will realize that sometimes it doesn't go how you want it to, but it is still possible to take so much from that situation. And this is what I really, really appreciate. This, what I'm going to show now, is a collaboration video that I did with other students at UAL from different courses. And in our second year, I believe it is unit six, we are asked to collaborate with students from different courses, including our own, and do a piece together. I think this was probably one of the most challenging moments of university for me. It really took me out of my comfort zone of working with other people, especially knowing what is that I like working with other people and the things that I definitely don't like with working with other people. I think it is important as an artist to realize that it is really good when you have your space and you get to work with all you want. But in real life, when you go out of university and you have to represent yourself as an artist, you have to have that kind of capacity to communicate with others, not only your ideas, but what your ideas stand for. And I think it was so essential for all of us to have this experience where we just come together and agree to disagree or agree all the way or never get into a final decision. But it's still very important that you get the chance to collaborate with people. A lot of people have problems starting friendships a lot of people have trouble communicating with people from different courses and i think the initiative of the university to actually make this a unit it can be a bit scary for some people but i think all of us at the end of it could see the value in collaborating and have some time to actually work together i'll play the video now and after it if there is any questions about the collaboration or anything relating this unit, reach me out if you can or talk with Maya or Hannah. I'm sure they will be able to help you just as well.
So I know, again, lacking a bit of context might make this video not be as interesting, but this was a collaboration between myself and some painting students and photography and computational arts. We decided that what we wanted to do with this was to create a collective memory of something that never happened. <laughs> we decided to go through different archives, familiars of our past works or things that we just found. And we were actually able to find this video of, uh, this is actually a collection of both Clement's family. Uh, he studies painting now and also Baez's family. She is in painting as well, but we decided to put it all together with computational arts and do a little trace of those memories pretend that we didn't know anything about it, which actually we didn't because we asked Clement to not tell us where he found those videos, who the people were, and with the music that um, we were able to make in computational arts to fix the, to, to sort of follow the video and from there create sketches of the pathways that we believe that were happening, as in where were they? Where is this place? How do you get there? How do you feel when you are in that place? What are the smells and such? This sort of became a little narrative of how we can collectively create memory of events that never happened personally to us and still be incredibly touched by them. Um, I don't know exactly if we fully aced the experience, but it was surely fun to to do it. And definitely looking back now, I know the things that I could have done differently or the things that I could do to, to get a better result with time, but definitely it was an amazing experience to share with other students as well. Uh, now I'm gonna try to run a little for the final. Um, this is part of my final, my last exhibition, uh, the one that I did on my second year for Bouch House. I am very much interested in this process, along with um, archivals and such, I, I am also very interested in the concept of permanence in photography, as in should the things that we keep actually stay there for the time that we decided that we want them nothing is eternal but when we take a photo of something there is the idea of eternalizing something so i decided to take a few photos from different moments of my life and print them using a thermal printer the same one that we use for credit card machines and such because of the grain in this image, I wanted to sort of try to recreate the fogginess in my head that I get from trying to remember events. And when this happens, sometimes you don't really know when something happened. Sometimes you say, oh, I, I was seven, but you were nine and so forth. And I wanted to play with not knowing exactly when these moments in my life happened, but I, I knew they were important because there were pictures of them. So I rescanned those images and drew them and ran them through the thermal printer to create this small collection of very tiny prints where they are kind of all from the same event, but exposed differently, which then it changed the grain of the image and then consequently changed how the image was seen. Um, something that I thought it was very interesting was to see how these images kind of became abstract, even though that wasn't necessarily my intention. So I think this is a part of the project that I really like in the idea of mind, memory, permanence. How do we actually remember events happening? And my last project, the one that I am developing right now for my last year, is actually a full circle event. Going back to the book that I was using for my project on foundation, I decided to go back to it also using the elements of permanence in photography and how images are kept to try and challenge the idea of an archive. 
by this I mean I'm using photos that were originally by an archive, but I'm printing and using them with materials that are actually not time resistant by using um, using cyanotypes, exposing things to water and search wind, light, all of these things really end up changing the perspective of the image. And this is what I'm very interested in doing at the moment. And very much also excited to see the changes that have happened in my in my practice since the beginning of my studies at UAL. Um, I believe this is it for my time. Uh, thank you very much for everyone that watched this. And if there are any questions relating to the course or anything, please feel free to ask me when you see this. Um, and if I had to give an advice to anyone that is starting next year is be patient and also be okay with the idea of things not working the way you want them to in the first attempt. I feel like most of the time we have very defined ideas of what is that we want to do. And sometimes things don't go as we planned. And these are the good things because you then know what are the results you can get from that. And even decide if you change your mind in the middle of the way and be like, you know what, this is not what I want. I actually do like the result when it's kind of ugly and doesn't necessarily conform to my own expectations and document your work. Um, for personal reasons, I would say that probably uh, my documentation of my work is very challenging because I challenge the idea of documentation, but if you're not doing the same as me, please remember to keep documenting your work because it's always such a lovely, reminder to yourself of how much you've done and how much you evolved during these years. And it's always fascinating to share it with other people. So that's it. Thank you so much. Okay, so I hope that was helpful to you all to see an insight from a current student. So I'm now going to hand you over to Maya, who's going to give you an overview of the course so let me just bring up my presentation and then we'll go from there okay uh, here it comes there we go Ma. i'll hand over to you okay great thank you hannah um, it was lovely to see Beatrice's work over the years all shown together like that. I really enjoyed that, actually. Um, so welcome to a presentation about VA Fine Art Photography at Camberwell. Um, as the course leader, I've been the course leader now for a few years, and um, I think that the course is a really exciting place to work and to develop your phot photograph uh, photography and fine art skills. Um, the... There are certain things about our course. Oh, hello. I seem to have gone back to Beatrice's. Have I gone the wrong way? Hold on a second. What's going on here? Two seconds. I'll sort that. Hold on a second, now. everybody. Right. Okay. That should be. Yeah. There we go. Okay. And have I got the ability to change the slide? Yes. Let's check that you can do that. Um, I can't see the. There's no facility to do that at the moment. Can you do that now, Maya? Can't no. Okay, I tell you what, I'll move them through them for you. Okay, that's fine. Could you move it on to the next one then? That would be great. <laughs> great. Okay. So, why to study um, fine art photography at Camberwell? Um, we really focus on 
teaching kind of skills that then can be used within um, industry and within practice after students graduate. And a lot of this is about thinking about how to develop an idea, how to process an idea and how to implement an idea. Um, and having really in-depth knowledge of these kinds of conceptualizations is really important in the world as well as as part of a degree. Um, the great thing about the course is that it offers a wide freedom to experiment. Um, this is wider than a lot of photography courses where they are much more um, brief led. Um, and we also have a really exceptionally good dark rooms and technical development team who um, teach collaboratively with the academic team um, to help students develop ideas both inside and outside of photography. Um, it is a key thing about the course that we are in a fine art context. So you access fine art through photographic practice. It doesn't necessarily mean that our students all become photographers, but it does mean that photography sits as, as, a, as a really important key element of their practices. Um, it's because of the embeddedness in the art school environment that, that um, this photographic practice becomes so expansive. Can you move on to the next one, Hannah, please? Thank you. So within the course, over the period of three years, we offer access to contemporary debate, debates and historical um, positioning upon photography. We do that in specific lecture series in years one and two and a seminar series in year three. Um, we also have a um, weekly artist talk, which is across the whole of the fine art spectrum. Um, and photography gets to specifically invite a number of those, as do all the other courses. And all of the students have access to them. They're called the perspective lectures. Um, the purpose of these ideas is, is to essentially draw out the students to start to think about photography in its widest sense, to think about what, what photography is as an essential thing. You saw in Beatrice's video there that she's thinking very much about the archive and photography and how that those two things relate. And we really um, encourage students to think about what photography is in the world, how it operates and how it can be effective and used both professionally and in a society. Uh, next, please. Thank you. So one of the key things about the course in terms of um, teaching is that we focus on exhibition opportunities and right the way through from the first year. Um, this is a first year exhibition, which is a quite an ad hoc, quick exhibition, which happens on the college site. Um, we right from the first year, we focus on developing exhibition skills. So what you're looking at in these photographs would be very quick starting experiments. And then if you go on to the next slide, Hannah, this develops all the way through into the third year where they show at Southwark Park Galleries. Where we show can vary on year on year, but this has been a really exciting venue and we use it very quite consistently for the third year at the moment. Um, Southwark Park is um, a, a park not far away, which has two galleries which are run together. There's the Lakeside Gallery, which is this one, which is the white kind of cube space. And then if you go on again, Hannah, I think, yes, that's right. This is Dilston Grove, which is, is this extraordinary old concrete church. So there's these two spaces which are quite different and we challenge students to propose which space they would like to show work in, to make work in response to the spaces and to consider what it is to be in a group exhibition on this scale in a professional context where there will be public who come to the gallery um, viewing the work, there will be a, a public opening, um, and a lot of people um, come to see these shows, which is really exciting for the students. If you carry on again, please, Hannah. And that again, that's uh, at the Lakeside Gallery. And should we carry on again? 
Okay, so now all the way through this presentation, I'm going to show you lots and lots of student work, um, partly because I think it gives the sense of the breadth of work that can be made on the course, but also because um, we're very proud of our graduates and they've made extraordinary work and they continue on to do really exciting things in industry and in practice. So this is Zhao Li Chang, who graduated two years ago. And um, Zhao Li was a wonderful student who was really engaged and focused. And um, she made this wonderful project, um, Generality, which has been very successful. It was shortlisted for the New Contemporaries and um, also for the Global Design Graduate Awards. Um, and um, Zhao Li produced a lot of prints, but she also produced video. Um, and it was a very, very engaging project. Next, please, Hannah. And then this is a piece of work by Felix Suarez, who did this amazing project on site in college where he turned um, entire rooms of the art school into camera obscuras and then made large scale prints on coloured paper of the images from the camera obscuras that he made. It was really ambitious, um, really exciting work. Next, please, Hannah. Okay, and this is Katya, who graduated just a couple of years ago as well. Uh, Katya Alyssa is now um, on the MA in puppet, puppetry at Wimbledon, in fact, and has gone on to further study. But um, she made this very ambitious project, which was to narrate an entire imaginary world in which she made these puppets and made videos of the puppets and um, sort of performing in relation to herself and also made sculptural installations um, that were exhibited in site specific places. This was part of her degree show. Next, please, Hannah. And this is Theo Cuff. So Theo, again, graduated in 2022. Um, he worked very, very specifically with the archaeology of photography and the history of photographic um, production. He was very interested in slides and light boxes. And you can see here that he's handmade a series of different light boxes, as well as finding um, um, existing um, old machines to show his slides on that he's then repurposed. Thank you, Hannah. OK, let's go to the course overview. Next, please. Okay. Now, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the whole three years of the course. Um, the key things that I've already mentioned are that we don't set thematic briefs. We start off helping students to think about how they might work, up, work independently. And very quickly, students start to generate their own ideas and work on their own practice. Um, we're there to support them to do that. If students struggle with this, then we're happy to um, give them guidance as to where to go and to give them ideas as to where to go. But what we don't want to do is to push students into making work on particular themes that they're not interested in. We want our students to be engaged and to be working on things that they care about. Um, this means that Conceptually, the students move much further from when they start the course to the end of it than they would if we were giving them thematic briefs. They really develop as people. They're much more reflective and reflexive in their practice. Um, we support this mostly through one on one conversations, through tutorials. All students are offered a personal tutor. Um, who supports them pastorally, but actually is primarily there to help them develop their individual practice. Um, and the personal tutor will see them through in a year, all of the opportunities to exhibit, as well as tutorials in development to, uh, in the development towards a submission. Um, yes, next please, Hannah. Okay, so the first year. Now, the first year is very much about an introduction. So it's about key themes in photography, highlighting approaches to photography, both historically and currently. And it's about students starting to find their own space and their own practice. We challenge them to ask questions. Um, what can be generated by a photographic practice? What is the most expansive form an image can take? What is the key idea you're working with? And these are complicated questions. We don't expect students to, to answer them immediately, but 
we try to help them start on that journey in the first year. Next, please, Hannah. So in the second year, it's much more outward looking. Um, it's very much about students um, thinking about how their work might exist in the world. Students are encouraged to collaborate. You saw in Beatrice's video there that she was talking about the experience of collaboration and that this is complicated and difficult and that not all artists feel that it's necessary, but it is necessary for um, to work in the world and for employability and for um, the nature of our industry, ultimately. Public projects and art projects happen through collaboration. So we spend a big proportion of the first half of um, the second year working in a collaborative project. We also, over the last few years, have been developing our offsite project, offsite exhibitions. So in addition to the first year experimental um, opportunities at the beginning, both in the first year and the second year, for the past couple of years, we have had big offsite exhibitions. We had an exhibition at the Barge House last year, and this year we have an exhibition at Copeland Park in Peckham, which is a really exciting space, which is embedded right in the middle of Peckham. Um, so through the second year, this um, exhibition at Copeland Park this year is going to be just after the spring break. And um, also in the second year, they produce their first major essay, which situates their practice and the practice of others within a context. Then towards the end of the second year, they write a proposal for their third year. So they start to imagine their future practice in a professional context. Going to move on, please, Hannah. Ah, yes. So in between the um, second and third year, there is an option for students to take part either in the Creative Computing Institute Diploma, which is an additional year which um, where students go and they work in the CCI Institute and they are given an additional diploma at the end of their degree. They would go away and do a year with the CCI and then come back to um, fine art photography for their third year to graduate. Um, we do find that this is really exciting. And for students who are interested in technology and coding, it's a really great professional opportunity to extend their skill sets. Um, we've had um, students doing amazing things with AI and machine learning and um, really fascinating um, ideas around robotics and things like that um, as a result of this year. And it makes our degree show um, even more varied, I think, than it would be otherwise. They also have the option to do a diploma in professional studies. This is a year in industry. So as part of the diploma in professional studies, they would not still remain on the photography course for that year. They would go and be part of the diploma in professional studies for a year and then they would come back again and graduate with us in the third year. And the Diploma in Professional Studies would involve a work placement that the student um, sources and discusses with the tutors of the Diploma in Professional Studies. And then um, they also have a series of kind of professional development opportunities throughout the year. Um, and some students thrive on both of these opportunities. It's, it's really exciting. We had one student last year, Evan, who, um, was able to go and do um, editorial and um, director of photography work and now is working as a professional director of photography. And um, it's really exciting to see what the DPS can produce. The other opportunity that comes into the second year and mostly students do this in the second term is that um, they can go and study abroad. We have excellent links with universities in Europe in Japan um, and in America, where students go and they um, spend a term usually um, working in that university and they get accredited for that work that they've done at the university and then they come back and rejoin us at the end of the second year. Um, often that's a really exciting thing for their practice actually, and it really develops the work going into the third year. So then coming into the third year, at the end of the second year, they will propose what they want to do and they're given options. Um, and those options also provide opportunities for work placements and employability kind of um, opportunities at 
during the third year. So they propose a research plan that will cover both their art practice and their thesis. Their thesis can be an essay, a dissertation, if you will, and it can also be a presentation, which is, so it could be a video, which is a 40 minute video, which is upon a chosen topic. It can be a live project that is something like they could go and take part in a collaboration with a scientist, put on an exhibition um, and then write about that. Or it can be a work placement where they go and they take part in a work placement, working in industry in some form, and then they come back and they reflect upon that. All of these options require a written component, um, which is quite extensive, but it's not. What, what the breadth of this offer does is it gives scope for students who have different interests to pursue the interest which is most relevant to them. Also during the third year in photography, we run regular professional practice um, lectures and seminars that cover all kinds of things from um, how to work, how to work on a residency, how to write a CV, um, how to, what kinds of exhibitions you might get involved in, um, self-promotion, all kinds of things. Um, we are also open to making that adaptable to the needs of the particular students in the group. Sometimes we have students with very particular kind of interests in working in areas and in industry, and then we would try and support them to gain experience and understanding of that area. Next, please, Anna. Thank you. So this is a piece of work by Will Brooks, who um, graduated in 22, and he did do the CCI diploma as well as the photography degree. So he graduated after four years. And these were quite fascinating, but the, these etchings were turned into a radio signal, which played through this little speaker here. And the etchings were each in very, very individual and produced a very, very individual sound. It was a very delicate and very beautiful um, object, actually. And then it also produced this sound. It's quite fascinating. Next, please, Hannah. OK, so in terms of where our students go when they graduate, I mean, we have a whole list here on the slide, which I'll go into. But then there's also very recent graduates. Um, so we have a graduate Lotta who is currently working as a curator, curator um, for a gallery in uh, Lithuania, I think. And um, we also have Evan who is still working as a director of photography currently, while still currently studying on the course. Um, we have a lot of students that have gone on to um, postgraduate study. So as well as Katya who's in Wimbledon, we have Guy Ronan who has gone on to to um, Pietzvart, I believe, um, and um, lots of students go to the Royal College. Um, we have also in the past have students who have edited collections of photographic books for institutions such as the Photographer's Gallery, who've worked with the South London Gallery. Um, you can see here that lots of our students go on to be artist assistants initially, and then they develop into kind of forms of arts development or, or um, admin. Um, and lots of our, the good thing about the photography course, I think, is whilst it's a, within a fine art context, it also teaches the skills of um, a editorial photographer. And it's possible to be an editorial photographer here and to enter the kind of publishing world. Um, we do lots of projects around artist books and printing materials, and we're really interested in expanding the scope of our students in terms of employability. Next, please, Hannah. Okay, and this is Ben Yao, who is also currently studying, um, and he had a really interesting um, exhibition at Innova, um, which was, uh, it was a residency, I think, actually, at Innova, after graduating. And now he's um, doing his MA again. Uh, and next, please, Hannah. In fact, I think this is his exhibition in Innova just after he graduated. There you go. Okay, that brings me on to the staff. So I'm the course leader, but we also have a reader, Suguna Haman, who works with us, Samriti Mira, Melinda Gibson, Mervyn Arthur, and Claire Undy, who lead years. And all of our artists and um, 
uh, all of our tutors are artists and they all work professionally. So if you go on to the next page, please, Hannah. So I, for example, at the moment, am a research fellow at the Horniman Museum in London. And I have been successful in getting a three year grant to stay, to work in the Horniman and to produce work around the theme of tea and photography. And I look at the history of tea um, from the tea trade in the UK, but also from its origin, its um, origins in India and China and um, the kind of complex history of that. But what I've also been able to do with this project, which is really exciting this year, is I've been able to draw in students. So we have um, put together an exhibition, which is a response exhibition to the tea exhibition at the Horniman Museum. And students will show in Camberwell space at the end of November. They've all had the opportunity to meet with the curator of the exhibition to um, have a series of workshops developing photography using tea as an alternative process and additional tutorials to help them think around the kind of historical context that they're working with. And it's drawing together students from all over the world who have differing and fascinating relationships to tea, which I think has been a really um, bonding experience for our students this year. Next, please. So these are um, related to Samriti Mira, who is currently our third year leader. And um, Samriti exhibits very widely um, in a range of places. And next, please, Hannah. And this is Joy Gregory, um, who is one of our associate lecturers. And Joy actually has um, currently literally just opened. She has work in an exhibition at the Tate. Um, it's called Women in Revolt, I believe. Um, but this was um, another installation of hers um, last or oh, a couple of years ago now. Next, please. Uh, this is Claire Undy, who's currently our first year leader. Claire runs an online project space called Skelf, which has which she curates and um, also codes for and organizes and um, has been very successful in getting funding to um, support this project. And there are wonderful, wonderful exhibitions on there to have a look at. Next, please. And this is finally, this is Shizuka Yokomizo, who is a senior lecturer on the course. And this was an exhibition um, at the Museum of Modern Art in Tokyo that Shizuka had not long ago. So it's really important for our course that students are aware that the teachers and tutors that they work with are all practicing artists. We're all engaged in industry as well as in practice and that we bring to the table those contacts that we have in industry so that, that we can help the students gain the experience that they need. I think that might be it, is it? Is there any more? It is. <laughs> Thank you so much, Maya.